I was really happy when I found out that we were approved to receive three Razorback Musk Turtles from the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group as part of their Kelonian Propagation Program. I couldn't wait to start building an ecosystem with a biological filtration system that will house these turtles for their start. I'm going to show you how to build it Turtle Man cheap. Razorback musk turtles are so tiny when they hatch that we're going to need to start these out in one of our climate control buildings. And I want to build a small, complete ecosystem to do that in. When they're moved outdoors, they'll be in a biological filtered pond using the upflow filtration system. I want to explain to you how that works and I want to replicate it in a 40 gallon breeder aquarium. For almost 40 years, we've been filtering turtle water. That's a challenge. These are some giant turtles that we have that eat a lot of meat and food of other sources, and they create a huge mess. For many years, we've been utilizing and working with different filtration systems. And several years ago, we connected with Aquascape and discovered and learned about their upflow biological filtration system. We converted all our systems over to this over the past few years and have reduced our maintenance to almost nothing. We are feeding turtles on a continuous basis and we're not having to go through the painstaking process of cleaning our filters. It takes care of itself. You're working with nature, not against it. And these filtration systems are running for years on end with little to no filter maintenance which leaves us time to take care of our turtles. So now I wanna take a second and explain how upflow filtration systems work. All of the contaminated water that's returning from your housing is pumped into a void area underneath the filtration media. It rises up through the filtration media where the bacteria and enzymes are that are consuming and breaking down the organics that are in this water. The sludge and silt, rather than compacting your filtration media, settles into the void area that it, the water first entered in. Then it can be vacuumed out of there through a snorkel tube system. This system works. It doesn't allow the filtration media to become compacted or need cleaned very often. Traditional filtration systems that are sold on the market towards the aquarium industry work good for aquarium and fish, but they don't really create a biological balance to break down the mass amount of waste that keeping turtles produces. And these systems require constant filtration maintenance. So let me show you how to build a beautiful self-maintaining system and do it turtle man cheap. I'm starting with a 40 gallon breeder aquarium, found it on Marketplace, $35. I want to wall off a section of this aquarium to build the filtration in. And I'm going to use plexiglass to do that because I have some left over from a previous build. Now this is quarter inch plexiglass, so it's kind of thick and harder to cut. You can also buy glass cut to size. I priced it and it would have been $15. I cut three pieces of plexiglass to fit inside the aquarium to build three separate walls. I'm going to use silicone to fasten these plexiglass walls into the aquarium. And the water will be flowing from a submersible pump in an intake bay that's in the animal containment side of this. And it'll be flowing through a tube, through the walls, into the filtration chamber. At the bottom of the filtration chamber is a PVC pipe drilled full of holes for the water to be pumped out of. It's pumped into the filtration chamber through that PVC drilled full of holes and rises up through the filtration media. This PVC pipe also has a riser tube that I'm going to call a snorkel, and that's where you can hook a shop vac up to it every year or sometimes even two years and suck the sludge out from under the filtration media. And you can do this without disturbing the animal containment area or the filtration media. I wanted to build an intake bay to place a submersible pump in that would allow the pump to run by sucking water in through the top, but not 
through the bottom where the sand and dirt is. I did that by putting a plastic tub upside down on a piece of ceramic tile and used Gorilla Outdoor Landscape glue to fasten that tub to the ceramic tile and then glued broken slate around the outside to make it look good. I had to glue these rocks on a few at a time and let them set up. Otherwise they wanted to slide down off of each other. When I was finished and it was cured, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. I thought it was pretty cool to look at. Then I didn't glue rocks on the top of that tub that was glued on upside down. Cut the top of the tub out to allow an opening to stick the submersible pump down in. And I did a little test fit. Pretty pleased with this. The filtration area of this aquarium is walled off on one end. It's got six inches of space to hold the lava rock that will be our filtration media. There are three walls of plexiglass. The first baffle is to hold the lava rock over into the filtration area. It holds the water back. The water spills over the top of that baffle into another baffled area, directing the water downward and then up into the lower level of the animal containment area. The first baffle is sealed on the bottom and the sides and left open two inches down from the top. That's so the water spills over the first baffle. There's a three quarter inch gap in between all of the baffles. The second baffle is raised two inches up off of the bottom and only sealed on the sides. That way when the water is spilling over the first baffle, it's forced under the second baffle. That way the water that's being added into the animal containment area isn't stirred radically and it comes in quietly. The third and final baffle is five inches tall. It's sealed on the sides and the bottom. This works as a barrier to keep the sand into the animal containment area and the sand is there to grow the plants in that makes this thing a healthy ecosystem. Now it's time to replicate the aqua blocks. Aqua blocks are a product made by Aquascape that are awesome. They hold up tons of weight and they create that void area under the filtration media. On a large scale and outdoor builds, we use the aqua blocks. They don't make aqua blocks near this small. So we're gonna have to find something that's a plastic grate that sits on the bottom over the output tube so that it allows that space for the sludge accumulation. I found this old plant tray out in the barn and it'll work perfect. Flipped upside down, it'll create the void underneath the lava rock. I used my oscillating saw to cut it to size to fit in that six inch space inside the aquarium where the lava rock will go on top of it. I had to cut a channel in it so that it would sit flush on the bottom of the aquarium over the output tube. With almost nothing left to build on it, it was time to start putting this thing together. I dropped the spacer into the bottom of the filtration media area. I washed all the lava rock outside until all of the red stopped coming off of it. Then I picked the largest pieces of lava rock first and put a layer of the largest ones in first so that the small ones wouldn't fall through my plastic grate. Then I topped off with the rest of the lava rock, filling it clear to the top of the first baffle. I also painted the glass on the front of the aquarium to disguise where the baffles were siliconed on. I thought it looked pretty good that way. I use lava rock for builds like this for several reasons. It's full of pores and those pores trap and harbor and grow the bacteria and enzymes that break down your organic wastes. So it's a very effective, cheap method. It's cheaper than bio balls and it stacks really well too. It doesn't push on the sides of the aquarium or the plexiglass as hard as rocks will because it's jagged and porous, it's a perfect substrate to use. I used one whole bag in here, which gives you a lot of surface. I wanted to make something to hold the sand and soil from going over the top of the third baffle. I used a piece of cypress stick and screwed it with stainless steel screws to a piece of floor tile so that when the sand is piled on top of it, it'll hold the stick down. I also glued some landscape fabric to that stick and it would work like a filter to keep any sand from sifting over the edge of the third baffle. You always want to use stainless steel screws for this. 
with my cypress stick barrier placed up against baffle three and my intake bay sitting at the far left end of this thing with the submersible pump in it, I hooked up the hose and was ready to put two inches of soil in the bottom, then two inches of sand over the top of the soil. The soil would be to grow the plants and the bacteria to make this thing a true ecosystem. I wanted to make sure that the space between the third baffle and the second baffle wouldn't have rocks falling down in it and getting plugged up. So I used these scrubber pads that you buy at the dollar store, washed them off, and I stuff them in around places where I don't want rocks to go down in. Then I can bury those in some real coarse rock. That way uh, the turtles don't get down in that space. The rocks don't fall down in that space. And if I ever have to, I can use tongs uh, to pull the rocks out off the top of the scrubber pads and pull the scrubber pads out. I did the same thing with the pump and the pump vault. I placed the scrubber pads around the pump and then I could lay rocks on top of the pump. It works as a pre-filter as well. It hides the pump and it keeps the turtles and fish from ending up in the intake of the pump. With the construction of this project completed, it was time to put in all the living plants. So I had several different kinds of plants that I put into this. Some of them are growing in the lava rock to feed on the nutrient that's trapped in the filtration media. Some are planted in the sand out in the main housing area, and some are free floating. All of that helps create this natural balance. I also like driftwood and wood. Wood is important to have in these systems. There are families of bacteria that live in the soft substrate of wood that are different families of bacteria that live in the sand and gravel. So to create this entire balance, you need wood in there. You need wood, you need gravel, you need plants. This thing should run for months without any maintenance. Now keep in mind there are only three small razorback musk turtles that'll be in this and they'll probably only be in here for the first year of their life. So the bigger the turtles get the more damage they do to the plant life that's in there and they'll be moved into our outdoor habitats. So this is a great starter home. It's got a very good balance and it's neat to look at and it takes care of itself. And just like all our other upflow biological filtration systems, this one can run for months with zero maintenance performed on it. So let's add this thing up. We bought the aquarium on Marketplace for $35. The glass would be $15 pre-cut. The pump is in at $15. The lava rock is $6.57. The scrub pads at $1.25 and sand at $10.79. That brings the total on a complete self-filtering ecosystem, the entire enclosure, to $83.61. That's money well spent in the pre-preparation for the arrival of three razorback musk turtles.